Hello and welcome to this week's Top Gear. We're in Los Angeles, City of Angels, the real home of the Athens Society and all that conspicuous consumption. And we're here because they're about to launch an automotive revolution here that eventually will affect us all. This city was really built around the motor car. It sprawls across hundreds of square miles. They've got vast 12-lane freeways, boulevards without pavements, driving everything from burger bars to banks. Southern Californians drive 100 million miles a day. In terms of petrol consumption, they rank third behind the rest of the US and Russia. Yet they've just passed new laws here to phase out the petrol and the diesel engine over the next 15 to 20 years. We're here to see why, and look at some of the implications for us Europeans. And that's where we start tonight, back in old Europe with Renault and Chris Goffey looking at new versions of the 19 and the 21. The Renault 21 is well established in Britain as a saloon and an estate. Now there's a new hatchback. And there's also a booted Renault 19. It marks the point at which Renault drop those confusing numbers and go for model names right across the range. What's this one called? It's the Chamard. No major surprises at the back here. Quite a standard hatchback layout, removable parcel shelf and an asymmetric split rear seat. Plenty of room for the top gear luggage, but uh, quite a high loading sill. The big surprise, why it's taken so long for Renault to introduce this variant. After all, the 21 Saloon was launched back in October 1986. It seems quite a long time to educate the buyers that there's another variation available. The booted version of the 19, to my mind, rather more attractive than the slightly dumpy hatchback version, and it's got a better CD factor, as you might expect. Under the lid, quite a capacious 16.3 cubic foot boot. It just about takes the top gear suitcases and the rear seats also fold down if you've got a long load. The spare wheel is under the boot floor and that's a big advantage, it means you don't have to unload everything if you get a puncture. The car competes against models like Volkswagen's Jetta, Vauxhall's Belmont and of course Ford's Orion. Now those buyers tend to be rather older than traditional hatchback buyers but they require a rather high standard of luxury and equipment in their cars and they all come from the business sector, which is where Renault has got to do well. On the move, the Renault 19 impresses with its solidity. There's very few shakes and rattles, and that's an intentional policy on the part of Renault. They've made the car stronger and slightly heavier than its predecessors, precisely to meet consumer demands for a car that feels more Germanic and more solid than some of their previous models. That impression is continued in the dashboard layout. It's got a soft feel top and it avoids the rattles of the rather thin plastic Renault tended to use in the past. The radio is located high up in the dashboard inside the driver's eye line and there's also a very convenient stalk control for changing station, volume and wave band. To be able to control the radio without taking your eyes off the road is something other manufacturers should emulate. It's a very comfortable car, the seat supports you in all the right places, there's a tilt angle and a lumbar support control. Performance is up to the class average but the 19 is no ball of fire and the 1.4 engine in this one sounds rather strained when it's pushed to the rev limit. Road holding is very good, there's a lot of adhesion from the tyres but make no mistake this is no traditional French suspended Renault. It's lost the softness and the roll from the older models, and it's very much a, a Euro car ride. It does everything competently, it feels and looks good, but you wouldn't call it outstanding. Changes to the 21 aren't just limited to the new hatch, but you've got to look pretty hard to spot the differences. Mechanically, the new range is very little changed from the old one, except I found on this particular example the gear shift rather notchy and sometimes very difficult to find the gear you want. But handling has always been one of the Renault 21's strong points. There's plenty of grip even in wet weather and the car always feels as though it's on the driver's side. French cars are currently achieving some success in our business and fleet markets. The Peugeot 405 and Citroen BX for instance are doing really well. With these two extensions to their range of models, Renault now stand a much better chance of joining that club.